Hi everyone, my name is Acadia Gurney and I am going to be a first year middle school math teacher in Colorado. What I've been doing the last couple of weeks is showing you how you can create your own resources and then convert them um, into a digital ways for you to share them with your students. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can take your maze activity that we did previously and create it into a digital activity. So in last video, we created a template that looked like this, where you just have a maze and then some directions. And then um, this is something that you could give your students. And this will be linked down below in my Teachers Pay Teacher store, where you can just download this and edit it for free. What I also did in last video is actually created my own maze. So this is just an adding and subtracting integers maze, but really mazes can be used for whatever content area or any subject. So what I did in last video was I created this and then I started to show you how you can create a, an answer key. And so I just went ahead and showed you, I just finished it um, on my own. And so what this does is this just shows you as the teacher the correct answer. So um, I just solved the maze and this was the, the path that I got. Um, this one should also be highlighted. So the way I did that is I just clicked the arrow and then I just did shape fill and I wanted it, be, wanted it to be this light pink color. So the thing that's really nice about this is now you know what the path looks like. So when you're grading your students' um, mazes, you know what the answer should be. And so you can just check it very quickly. Um, this step is totally optional. If you don't want to do it, that's totally fine. The last thing that I also added to this was a recording sheet. So this just has four different cells um, where students can show their work. Um, I only included it to be four because there's only four problems that they have to do to get the correct answer. However, you can make it um, seven because there's seven different questions. And that could be a way that if students finish early that they can go back and solve maybe all of the different boxes, or you can also include maybe eight boxes. And the last thing that they can do, so if they, they finish the maze, they solved it, and then you have them maybe go back and solve all of the um, boxes, and they still have some more time before you uh, wanna go on to the next activity, then you can also have them pick their own box and have them explain it to you in two different ways. So since this is adding and subtracting integers, maybe you could have them explain how to do this last problem, using the number line and maybe a two color counter model. So that is just a way that you can have students show their work. The way I created this was just inserted a table and I made it two by two. And then I just went ahead and cleared it out. So I'll just show you how to do it real quick. And then you just copy all of it and then go here um, to that white one and then all borders. And then in there you can just write proof or evidence or whatever you want them to be showing you um how they solve those problems so now that we have pretty much our powerpoint completed um we can make it digital so this would be great if students are in person and you want to give them um a quick check for understanding activity so you could just print this off you would probably delete this page um print this off and then have students solve it but say this would be maybe a good online activity what we can do is we can make it digital so that's what i'm going to show you now is how we can take our maze and make it digital. The way we're gonna first do that is we're gonna go to File, Export, Change File Type, and we're gonna save it as a PNG. And I'm gonna actually save it in a specific spot. Okay, so I'm gonna press Save. And it's gonna say, which slides do you want to export? I'm actually gonna say all slides. Just because, um, once we make this digital, I want the first slide and the third slide to be um, digital. So I'm going to just say all of them just because it'll be easier than going in and doing it individually. And so what that does is wherever you saved it, um, it will save it as a folder. So this is just called maze example. So it saved it as a folder. And then in here, it has all three of my slides saved as a PNG. So this would be super helpful if say maybe you had 10 slides, you don't have to go in and save each of the slides individually as a PNG. You can just have it automatically do that. So now that we have all of those saved as a PNG, now we can go to Google Slides and make this digital. So this is gonna be following the same um, example as when I created um, our matching activity and made that digital. So if you've already seen that, you might be um, really at an expert at this point in making um, your activities digital, 
but I am going to just show you again step by step how you can create this activity and make it digital, but it might be a little repetitive if you have seen my previous videos. So we're first going to go to Google Apps and then go to Google Drive. And then we're going to go ahead and do a new Google Slides. From here, we can go ahead and delete both of these text box. We don't need those. And I'm going to just get out of this. And then I'm going to just title this as Maze Activity. So now what we can do, let's change our slide size. So we're going to go to um, File, Save Setup. And then we're going to click widescreen and we're going to make it custom. And then I want it to be portrait. So I'm going to go 7.5 by 10. And then I just pressed enter. And now we're going to go to background, choose image. And I'm going to just drag slide uh, one, because that's going to be our first slide. Now I can say done. And so now what this does is it makes sure that students cannot move any of these pieces. So if we were still in PowerPoint and somehow we just shared this file with everyone, students could be moving around all this information, making it look all crazy. So that is the one really good thing about um, Google Slides is we set it as our background. And so now students can't move anything. Um, but I do want to go ahead and insert a text box. And so I want to let them know, let our students know that they need to type um, their name, date, and the period that they're in. So I'm going to just say type here, make it a larger font, and then I'm going to make it red just so students know. And then I'm also just going to go ahead and um, put a couple lines here so they know that they also need to fill out that information. So that's the only thing that students can edit so far is just the name, their name, the date, and the period that they're in. So now what we want to go ahead and do is have students explain how they would solve this maze, right? So if we just get printed it off and gave it to our students, they could color in the arrows, they could show us in a lot of different ways how they solve the maze. But if it's digital, it's a little bit harder for them to show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go insert um, shape arrow. And then I'm going to start with a down arrow because that's our first box. And I'm going to just go ahead and kind of outline this arrow so that it kind of covers over this one right here. So it's, it's a good enough size. And then I'm going to just make it that light pink so that once students finish it, it should look exactly like that key I showed you in PowerPoint. I'm going to make sure that there's no outline. And now I'm going to just move this over and I'm going to just paste it um, a couple of times, maybe four. Okay, so now we have those. And now what I can do is I can copy and paste it and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to press the circle on the top and that rotates your arrows. So then those line up with these ones. And then I'm going to just, um, maybe make four of those as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna just copy them individually so I don't have to keep rotating them. So now we have four of those. So now we have our down arrows and our across arrows, and then we still have two more diagonal arrows. So I'm gonna just copy and paste, and I'm gonna have it go over here. And then, Okay, that looks good. So that'll be our other arrow. And then our last one is going to be the one pointing up right here. Okay, so now we have that. So in our directions, we would probably say something like um, solve each of the boxes and follow the maze until you get to the end. Um, over the answer arrow, um, drag one of the pink ones so I can follow your path or something like that. So then students would say, okay, what is 10 minus six? Okay, that's four. So then they would just drag this over here and then they could keep going. Okay, what's 12 minus nine? Say they maybe say, think it's negative three. Okay, then they could just keep going like that. So that's a way that we can see how students solved this maze. Um, the other thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and insert the recording sheet so then students can show their work. 
So now we're going to go uh, press the plus arrow, or the, sorry, the plus sign, and then do the drop down arrow. And then I want to make it a blink slide. And then again, we're going to go background, choose image, and I'm going to just drag. And this is our slide three because this is our recording sheet. And then that'll pop up in a second. And you can copy this um, type name thing um, over here, but this will be just one uploaded um, slide once they turn it in. So it's not super necessary, but if you want, you can definitely copy that in. Um, and then what you can have here is, we're gonna go and insert a text box and say, type your evidence here. So then students would know that um, for each of the four boxes that they solved, they need to show their, their evidence, how they solved it. So again, I'm gonna make that pretty large. And then make it that color. And then you can just copy and paste. And then there students can type in and say, so the first one is 10 minus six. Um, I know 10 minus six equals four because, you know, they can, and then explain their thinking. Um, so that could be a way that then they can show how they solved each of the, the boxes. So from there, you're pretty much done with making your maze digital. Um, the one thing I'm gonna show you now is, I'm gonna have this go back to just type your answer, just, um, and then the one thing I'm gonna show you, and if you've already watched that matching activity digital, um, act, uh, sorry, so making the matching activity digital, you'll already know this little hack, um, but I wanna show everyone just in case if they haven't seen it. You can go ahead and press share, and then you can say, change to anyone with the link and then anyone with the link can view so i'm going to copy that but then what happens once you do that is um okay so let me so i do have to go incognito because i'm still logged in here so it's still letting me edit it so i'm going to go just incognito to show you what happens when you do that so now we're in view only so the good thing is students can't do much with it, but they can't edit it, right? You know, I'm trying to type right now and nothing's working. I'm trying to drag this over. It's not letting me move anything. So that's not great. The good thing though about making this link is now anyone who has the link will now open it up to a new document. But now what we want them to do is after edit, there's a hashtag slide equals id.p. We're gonna delete all of that and then just type in copy and then um, control C. And then I'm gonna go into a new slide. And what happens, what happens here, sorry, I copied the wrong link, is now it automatically makes you um, create a copy of the maze activity before you can do anything. So I would press make a copy. And now this would go to students' individual drives before they can edit anything. So now this is um, my own copy. So now I can move it around as however I want and it's not changing anything over here, right? This still looks fine, but now this is my individual copy. So now I could go ahead and upload this in whatever way. So I could copy this, I could share it with my teacher, um, I could do whatever. So that's another way. I don't know if I explained in that matching activity of, okay, how can students upload this? If you're using Google Classroom, you can just make this an, um, an, uh, an assignment and then it'll automatically make a new copy for all of your students. So that's if you have Google Classroom, but if you have a different platform, then what you could do is you could share it this with your teacher um, or you could share this with someone else um, so then the teachers can see, okay, you know, I got all of these from my students. Um, I think they could even upload it to like Schoology or Canvas as well and turn their assignment in that way. So that's another way they could do that too. Um, 
Another thing that students can do is um, you can also do insert an image and upload from computer. And so what students could do is they could also save their work as just, um, you know, they could fill out their work on just uh, pen and paper, and then they could take a picture of it and upload it to their computer. And then they could insert that work, just um, insert the image maybe from computer or if they did it um, on their drive somehow um, or by camera. So you could do the camera and you could have your students um, hold up their work and take a picture of it and it'll automatically go into the slide. Um, so that's another way that you can have your students show work as well. So that is all I have for you today. So I really appreciate you watching. Um, again, we kind of just took our maze activity that we created in PowerPoint and we made it digital using Google Slides. Again, if you're gonna be in person, um, you maybe don't need to make it digital. You can just print it off from PowerPoint and give it to your students. But if um, you know, there's a large chance that we're gonna be doing some type of digital learning, so the digital activity is really helpful for students um, to just work on it on their own. So that's a really cool way that we can have students still engaging in that activity and making it fun, um, even if they are doing it from home. Um, so I will link everything down below. I'll link all of my um, fonts that I used. I'll um, link the template that I created um, from last video. So I'll include this one and then also the adding and subtracting integers, just in case if anyone else um, wants to use it that's a math teacher watching this video and I'll also share this link as well um, so that you can make a copy of this activity and you can edit it as much as you would want so you would have to um, it would have to only be the adding and subtracting integers but it would still give you an idea to play around with each of the teachers and the arrows and stuff. so again I really appreciate you watching let me know if you have any questions at all and have a great day thank you